Well, Bangkok is uh, similar to most capital city, yeah, where you have a uh, very high density and very difficult to find cheap land. And any accessible land, which means if you have the infrastructure system uh, reaching out wherever, all that land will become expensive. Yeah? Uh, therefore, the only possibility for the poor to stay is to encroach. Huh? Uh, you add into the existing slum area. You rent a room or rent a house or whatever. Uh, otherwise, you stay on the vacant plot next to the big factory where nobody can see you. <laughs> yeah? But anyway, all together in Bangkok, you have about a thousand uh, community of this type, yeah? old rental, land rental, house rental, uh, squatters, small squatters, big squatters, and so on. So in some way we can say that poor people find land all the time. <laughs> poor people can acquire land, although it's illegal, but they're able to find it here and there all the time. Yeah? So if we, we see that as uh, something interesting, probably if we support the people with uh, uh, a good, uh, uh, flexible funding and let them find the land, you know. We found in the housing project in which we support that people can find a lot of very interesting land, yeah. Either government land or private land. They, after they, they make a survey, they will start seeing a lot of pockets, land pockets. Then they would start seeing who are the owner of the land and so on. And we have the word called blind land, which means these are the land which is not accessible. It's in the middle of the big, big alley and so on. But then they found that the owner want to sell it in cheap price or this particular land owned by the that particular government organization who doesn't seem to do anything on this land. So different kinds of land from the land survey they found, they start negotiate. And some of them quite possible, yeah? And this is the way people are able to acquire the unused land and to make a po possible housing project. Developer-led uh, housing is always expensive, yeah? as we uh, experience in the community manage or community construction uh, housing project. We found that the price of that housing project is always about half of contractor price. Yeah, and because people link together, they have a, a, a social structure, a stronger social cohesion, social structure, and that uh, social process can reduce the cost of housing, yeah, by working together. And because people uh, will not charge a very high labor cost, huh? uh, they, they will try to buy the material together in cheap price. They will find all the way that construction be done in such a way that it's not too expensive. Although they have skilled workers who help them. So with all that uh, social process uh, in, in the housing construction, it could reduce the price. Yeah? And that's very significant because poor people don't have the money. Yeah? You don't have the money, you have to find all the way that the price of proper housing is reduced. And we can say that it's about half price, same as in the Philippines. Yeah? We, they found that the price is about half. Therefore, if the private sector want to build the, say, lower standard housing, it means the standard will have to be lower than what the people are doing. Because that price of construction per square meter will be uh, more expensive, could be double. Huh? Uh, what, what people could offer. This is one. The second one is on the, the, the social system. Uh, this is a very, very important issue because 
housing development is not only a physical development. We also need a, a social development. You also need a social political linkages be, between this community and other community and the city and uh, 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 also develop the welfare system, the income generation activities and so on. It's a way to build community. It's not just a, a chill. Huh? You just stay in isolation, yeah? which is the case of most of the private sector housing. You only have the, the body without any soul, you know. So people just stay there and for the poor, if you live in isolation like that, it's very difficult for their life. If you sick, what's going to happen? If you cannot pay, what happened? You see a lot in the government public sector housing. When you can pay for three months, they cut the water, electricity for instance. So after you pay for so many months or many years, if suddenly you have an accident and you cannot pay, it means you're out. Yeah? But in the group housing process, where we organize uh, socially and with the community fund and so on, there is a flexibility of this. Huh? And you have the group financial system, or the group process to help protect, to help facilitate, to help uh, in the time of crisis. And there is a welfare system in which the, the children can have a, a bit of money for the scholarship. If the mother have to go to work, you can leave your children with the neighbor and so on. So it's more than just physical houses. And that's crucial for the poor because poor people mean the people who cannot have the income up to the uh, standard level. Therefore, they need to help each other. Yeah? And, and we have to translate that social help, social system into a part of the housing activities. And that's it's not something the private sector can offer.